just any test, a spelling test. How could a nice kid like me so desperately need to pass one little test? I decided to turn to good old mom for some moral support. It's all very elementary, dear. E-L-E-M-E-N-T-A-R-Y. You just need to concentrate. C-O-N-C-E-N-T-R-A-T-E. This is her new method of teaching me to spell. But to tell you the truth, it's driving me nuts. N-U-T-S. Your father was a poor speller too, Tommy, but look at him now, a successful businessman. S-U-C-C-E-S-S-F-U-L. That means full of success. Have you ever wondered how long a person can breathe with a dish towel shoved up their nose? <laughs> A spelling test to a third grader is like <coughs> the ACT to a high school senior. You spend hours studying useless information that you will probably never use again. Can anybody tell me the last time they used a trigonometry function in real life? <laughs> I didn't think so. <laughs> Tom is a third grade boy who uses his wild imagination to escape the reality of his dreaded spelling test. But in order to pass, he must overcome his teacher, Miss Komodo, and her crazy sentences. In the right, W-R-I-T-E, Stuff, by Dan Nukala. As the dragon lady begins to call roll, I cleverly maneuver myself to the back of the room. Baltazar Brown! His parents named him after one of the three wise men. In biblical days, they would have sacrificed him and kept the sheep. Here. Joni Brown, the ugliest nine-year-old on the face of this earth. One touch from those lips, and even Prince Charming would be a frog again. Present Miss Cabodo. Charita Hunt, the absolute love goddess of the third grade. She won't even look at a guy whose age isn't in the double digits. Present. All right, class, you know how this works. I will say the word twice. I will then use the word in a sentence. If you listen carefully, that's the problem. Her sentences, if I can make it through the test without listening to her sentences, then I know I can pass. And you'll receive the grade you so rightly deserve. All right, our first word is Prince. Prince. Aunt Jesse sent us two lovely prints of the jail in Paris, Texas for our anniversary. Prince. Prince. <laughs> Prince. <laughs> Prince. Old Great Plaster of Paris, I bring you a message. Prince of Perry, you ninny. Did you find the women from the ball? The ball? I thought you said round up the ones that were at the party last night. The ball and the party. Your, your ball is in the party? Never you mind. Ah. So these are the women from the ball. One of you was in such a hurry to leave last night that you drop the slipper. Once I find whose foot fits this slipper, we will ride off into the golden sunset together. How would you feel about becoming the next princess of Perry? How about a kiss, big boy? Then we'll try on that shoe. Take this one to no one, see if there's still room on the ark. <laughs> alas, alas, I am destined to be the loneliest prince in the world. Does nobody's foot fit this slipper? It looks like what a bye. <laughs> what light through God, my dear prince? Is it the voice of an angel? Are ye God to the universe? Please let this dainty foot fit this slipper. Oh, joy. Oh, rapture. Oh, no! <laughs> Very old permits. It's a mistake, a terrible tragedy. This cannot be your shoe. Uh, it has to be mine. I'm the only one left. Idiot! Ninny come poopy! You take this slipper and go from my sight! Sight. 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 <laughs> and the Prince of Perry <laughs> lived happily ever after as a bachelor. All right, class, 
Our next word is hair. Hair. Cousin Billy was the first to notice that Grandma's newly tinted blue hair was somewhat lopsided. <laughs> hair. <coughs> All right, our next word is plain. Plain. Grandpa preferred plain M&Ms because they were easier on his dentures. Plain. <laughs> plain. <laughs> plain. Things were going great. Life was sweet and oh so pleasant. Nothing but blue skies ahead. It was a calm day. We were flying in a tight formation on our way back from a successful bombing run deep behind enemy lines. We'd hit them hard that morning. The H2O bombs exploded right in the middle of their strategy session, which they had cleverly disguised as a game of schoolyard hopscotch. But our intelligence hadn't been fooled. We knew these wild women of the Amazon were up to no good. Man, are you with me? Over. Roger that, fearless wear right on your wings. Over. All right, time to head out. But be careful. Women can be tricky. Then suddenly, out of the pink clouds, the Amazon women struck back. July day, July day, I'm hit, I'm hit. Can you keep it in the air, boy? Negative on that one, fearless. I'm a goner. I don't even have a parachute. All right. Let me maneuver my plane over to you, son, and you can jump on my wings. Let courage be your parachute. Are you ready? All right, jump. <laughs> Ah, there you are, boy. I knew you could do it. Oh, fearless. How could I ever repay you? Just raise them kids of yours to be good, God-fearing citizens of this great country, boy. That's all the payment I ask. 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 Of course he landed the plane safely and the world was once again safe for democracy. All right, class, this will be a last word this morning. Night. Night. Our cousin Lucille is so ugly that a daddy only lets her come out at night. <laughs> night. All right, that concludes our test. You may now go to the library for story hour. Well, Mr. Jones, aren't you interested in expanding your imagination in the library? I'd rather stay here and watch you grade my test. Confident, are we? <laughs> well, I must say this is an improvement. A perfect score. And so my ordeal is over. I have faced the dragon lady on her own turf and won a glorious victory. Suddenly, I see a brilliant future ahead. A future filled with promise, junior high, a car, hot babes, college, puberty. What could possibly stop me now? Tom the Triumphant has conquered the world. Run along to the library now, Thomas. And remember, we have a geography test tomorrow, and you must know how to spell all 50 states and the capitals. <laughs> <laughs>